a blazing UFO, military lockdown, missing documents. Welcome to Mystery Sauce, where we investigate the Kecksburg incident and the secrets the government might be hiding. The December evening stretched out with usual calm over the northeastern United States and Canada. December 9th, 1965 was like any other winter night. Families huddled indoors, a brisk chill in the air, then the sky just erupted. A fairy orb, brilliant and blazing, tore across the heavens. Its trajectory was unusual, west to east, on a southerly course, a celestial renegade against the flow of the stars. Now in Detroit, Windsor and their residents witnessed this burning sphere in shock. Panic spiked in some. Was this a falling star or a prelude to a disaster? The spectacle continued. The object shed burning fragments as it plummeted, showering Michigan and North Dakota High with incandescent rain, sparking small grass fires here and there. Then came the sonic boom. Pittsburgh shook under the roar, windows rattled, and its citizens recoiled, wondering if the end had come. But the journey wasn't over. The fiery intruder continued to descend. It's picking up velocity as it hurtled towards Earth. 30 miles southeast of Pittsburgh, in the heavily wooded outskirts of a quiet village named Kicksburg, it made landfall. The fairy object, whatever it was, crashed into the earth with a resounding thud that startled the rural inhabitant. In Kicksburg, a mother of two named Frances Kalp stood in her kitchen, the warmth radiating from the oven, a cozy contrast to the chill outside. Her children played in the yard their laughter a sweet soundtrack to the ordinary evening. Then, the fairy spectacle in the sky shadowed a peaceful world. Frances felt her heart leap into her throat. She raced to the radio, fingers fumbling for the dial. Perhaps there'll be some news about the strange phenomenon she just witnessed. But the emergency broadcast did not bring clarity. It brought confusion. A section of an airplane had come off mid-flight. The disembodied announcer voice claimed, Absurd. What part of a plane could leave a fairy tale like that? Her thoughts were, were wearing when the phone rang, the U.S. Navy, an improbable caller on a night that felt increasingly unreal. Her instructions were short and stark. Watch the area where the object landed and report anything unusual immediately. Unusual? So Francis sputtered internally. Could anything possibly be more unusual than a fairy orb in a nonsensical announcement? Barely had she hung up with the phone rang again. State police were on their way. Then an, an even stranger arrival. Two grim-faced men in black suits, far from the typical small-town visitor. Her home was about to be the, their temporary headquarters. They informed her. Before she could protest, one of the men was already barking orders into his phone. The call sounding long distance. Worried about the bill, also about far more important things. Frances watched her familiar house transform before her own eyes. In the meanwhile, Frances wasn't the only witness. Brothers Rob and Ray Landy were out cycling, had seen the celestial streaker. Randy, overly played by a creek, had watched in wide-eyed wonder, and in the fire station volunteer fireman, Jim Mace was amongst a crew of 30 rusted into action to track down the crash site and quell potential blazes. He walked through the trees, alert, says his high end when he spotted blue flashing. Signaling the others, they found it, an object utterly unlike anything they had ever seen. It was bell-shaped, or the size of a Volkswagen bug, and those strange lights seemed embedded, not attached. The, surf the surface bore odd markings that another fireman, James Romanski, will later describe as akin to Egyptian hieroglyphics. But that was all they were allowed to see. The military had swept in, demanding that civilians leave at once. A tight perimeter was established. For now, the mystery was out of reach. And despite the official orders, some brave souls in Kecksburg couldn't resist the urge to get a closer look. Bill Weaver, a teenager with a nose for adventure, was in the vanguard. He weaved through the cordon, heart pounding, and caught a glimpse of the military hauling something, a large crate. It wasn't big enough for the whole object, he mused a fragment, perhaps, once one they managed to pry away from whatever the main thing was. Then a guard spotted him, and with a stern order, 
Bill's brief moment of discovery ended. And then back in town, the firefighters found their own station off limits. No arguments would shift the army's unyielding stance. Jim Mace, along with the others, chaffed against the e exclusion. James Romansky, however, got a bit luckier. He later reported seeing a flatbed truck emerge, an unmistakably bell-shaped object beneath the trap leg. Its unusual form still disconcertable. The military takeover of this quiet Pennsylvania town was absolute and surprisingly swift. Within days, the soldiers had packed up, taking whatever they found in the woods with them. But the mystery they left in their wake lingered far longer. Now, was this a simple plane crash after all? An errant meteor? The authorities stuck to their initial story, but their actions screamed otherwise. Why the military operation? The secrecy? It just simply didn't add up. With official channels offering nothing but silence, the residents of Kecksburg felt an undercurrent of unease settle into their once peaceful community. And the questions buzzed. Has something crashed that day? Was it of this world or someplace far stranger? Now the years melted away than decades. Kecksburg's Pennsylvania resumed its quiet small town existence. The trees grew taller in the forest where the strange object had landed. Seasons changed, yet one thing remained stubbornly unaltered the mystery that na December night in 1965. And the official story has never changed. Meteor? The authorities continue to claim even with mounting evidence to the contrary. In 2005, just ahead of the 40th anniversary of the incident, NASA had added a new twist. No meteor, they said. It had been a Russian satellite breaking up in the atmosphere. But the tests they based this on were conveniently lost. When investigative reporter Lee, Lee, Leslie Keen demanded proof via the Freedom of Information Act of this was a way to stall Keen, it failed. Two years later, a court ordered NASA to make their best efforts to find the documents, an effort that proved fruitless. The official invasions and missing documentation only intensified suspicions of a cover-up. Were they hiding a simple mistake, an embarrassing equipment failure, or was there something far more extraordinary they refused to disclose? Now, UFO researcher Stan Gordon, among the most dedicated, believed the Kecksburg object was a craft of extraterrestrial origin. Sure, there were other theories, a foreign government's advanced technology, a domestic spy project, but many found explanations involving aliens far more convincing. After all, the angle of descent was wrong for a meteor, and satellite technology at the time simply would ha have produced the lights and mobility reported by witnesses. The Kecksburg incident, often dubbed Pennsylvania's Roswell, continues to hold a strange fascination. While the initial witnesses have aged, a new generation of intuists and investigators are keeping the mystery alive, ensuring the questions surrounding that fateful December night refuses to fade away. Now, Lisa Keene, armed with the court ruling and backed by a network, determined network became a leading voice pushing for answers. The missing documents, a metamorphical smoking gun, only fueled her conviction that the government deliberately concealed the information about the events of December 9th, 1965. And Key wasn't alone. Others sensed the shadow of secrecy draped over the Kicksburg case. And WHJB radio reporter John Murphy, whose wife had ventured close to the crash site, found himself in its grip. The object she photographed? Her film was classified by a military guard. Murphy subsequent radio documentary object in the woods brought a chilling reprisal. Two mysterious men, claiming to be government officials, delivered a clear warning. Stop talking about the UFO or face unspecified consequences. Stan Gordon, a tireless UFO researcher, conducted his own investigation. He spoke to witnesses, compiled evidence, and reached stark conclusions. The government was not aware of the incident but actively involved in a cover-up. While Gordon's believed that the object was of alien origin, put him at the fringes of conventional science. His theory was no wilder than others that circulated. What if it wasn't Russian, but a secret domestic project? A spy satellite going rogue, perhaps? Such advanced technology would explain the intense interest and extreme secrecy from the authorities. And Gordon and others faced a frustrating reality. Despite their persistence, concrete proof remained elusive. The military stonewall documents vanished in the inexplicable passage of time muttered some memories. Still, 
the puzzle continued to lower and haunt. Comparisons between the Kecksburg incident and the infamous Roswell UFO crash of 1947 are inevitable. Both involve unexplained aerial phenomena, swift military intervention, shifting official stories, an alleged belief in a government cover-up desire to keep the truth from the public, especially the possibility of extraterrestrial contact. But why does Kecksburg still matter? Why, even decades later, does the mention of the town send shivers down spines and spark the imagination of UFO hunters? Conspiracy theorists and those who simply want to peek behind the curtain of the everyday world? Perhaps the answer lies in our human desire for answers, for a grand design. We look to the stars and wonder, are we alone? Unexplained phenomena often offer tantalizing hints that maybe, just maybe, we aren't. And if something extraordinary crashed into a Pennsylvania forest that night, then the answers might be closer than we think. And today you can visit Kecksburg in the town center, a full-size replica of the object in the woods stands, a testament to the undying curiosity it inspires. Visitors gather, they pose for photos, and perhaps on quiet nights, cast their gaze towards the star-speckled sky, hoping for a glimpse of something that once again will make their hearts race. Their world feel less certain, and the possibilities stretch endlessly into the cosmos. Well, folks, that's a wrap on the Kicksburg incident. Let me know in the comments what you think crashed that day. And if it was aliens, I hope they're better at parallel parking than navigating the cosmos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let's keep chasing these, those mysteries together, even though the government prefers we didn't. Thank you.